Hey guys, I'm Edward with Everything Kayak. And today we are gonna do a walkthrough of the Hobie Mirage Passport. Um, before we step into that guys, remember, if you wanna stay up to date on these videos, be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Um, feel free to you know dig into anything with it so we can get back, look at different things and stuff like that. Also, we're gonna drop the specs first. So the specs on the Hobie Mirage Passport, the length comes in at 10 foot five inches. It's gonna be 34 inches wide at the beam. The capacity on it is listed at 325 pounds. And we look at the weights. So 65 pounds dry, no drive, no chair, no paddle. Comes to 75 pounds, full loaded weight. So not bad starting off, you know, we'll talk about that. We're gonna go through some of the different features and also talk about the fact this is a thermoformed polyethylene kayak. We're gonna see what we call a, a leash port. So we've seen this in surf paddleboard industries where this is recessed in. It's a really cool option, but that cross pin there allows us to attach. What they're doing is like an easy carry T-handle. Um, nice little logo. We're gonna have a recess like what we saw come out on the compass where we've got that recess and a bungee. So things you can lock down and they're not gonna move around. We are gonna see the sail port. Really cool option, guys. That's gonna fit the add-on sail. They make a wedge port ram ball setup. You can put accessories as well as the, uh, the new Bimini. And we're gonna step back to the drive, guys. It does have a Mirage drive. We're gonna see the H tracks in each side with a center input point there. We can drag that T-bolt. Uh, most of your T-bolts across the industry are gonna fit there. Your cassette to block out your port there if your drive is out we'll see that standard twist and lock round hatch it's going to be in there guys that'll fit the insert tubs i know definitely the short divider one and uh, we'll get to checking on whether or not that's going to fit the larger one as well we've got a couple recesses here looks like they're going to be for cup holders uh most of you guys will probably adapt that into a position where it's going to hold something a little secure we're going to see some new style um, pad eyes, clovers, gear loops, whatever you want to call them. It's going to have attachment through the top, a little recess in the back. So they're using it in this direction as a paddle holder. So that allows us to get that bungee around the back of it. Um, speaking of paddle, this is going to come with a paddle. It's going to be aluminum shaft paddle. We are going to have some drip rings. Nice little Hobie logo on there. Two piece. So it's got the snap button ferrule for transporting and whatnot there cool option because it does have the recess and like we said we do have the bungee uh, that paddle is going to sit we're going to have a carry handle on both sides so we'll see those carry handles um, nice option if you blow them out looks like the hardware is on the outside so you can really get in there and adjust them we'll see the same pad eye setup that we saw for the paddle holder it was using the back side for the clip on the seat it's got plenty of space comes right in and out of there which is pretty cool into the seat we are going to be a little bit different style than we're used to seeing here guys it's going to be a metal frame rail we do have the mesh as well as some of the padding so this mesh is going to be structural and then this mesh here is going to have a little bit of detent to it uh, to supply some padding both on the seat back and the seat bottom move that out of the way it's going to be your owner's manual and whatnot seat does fold down um, which is going to give you the availability to adjust that back rest so you can tip it back we're going to have one securing point here which slides to the side, allows us to take that seat out. And we will step through that actually. Let's go ahead and pop the seat. And with a lot of these frame rail chairs we're seeing, you have the availability to use this seat out of the kayak as well. And this is gonna be no different. We've got a loop attached right here that allows us to lock that in. And now we can sit this on the ground and we have a beach chair. Uh, we do remember when we place this back in the kayak, we want to lock that lever in the back, make sure that seat stays secure, and then we want to transfer these clips back to the hull to make sure that the seat is secure for your paddling needs. Right underneath the front of the seat here, we are again going to see one of these little leash ports, and this is going to be your drive clip or hook um, if you want those fins to hold back that gives us the availability to lock that on there we can take our feet off of the drive steering handle is going to be on the left as we've traditionally seen on kayaks that have only one steering handle um, it moves pretty smooth um, we'll walk back we'll look at the rudder as we transfer through there 
Um, nice, a little bulkier than what we've seen on the adaptations for the new Outback as well as the Compass. So people are liking that it's a little beefier. Coming into the tank well, again, we're gonna see that recessed designating the tank well. We've got those new little pad eyes we were talking about there and a nice bungee that's gonna come across that we can easily unhook and then hook back depending on what gear we're doing. Flush mount rod holders are gonna be there. It looks like we've got some different variations on the taper direction. All the way into the stern where again, we are gonna see that leash port set up with the T-handle. Now on the rudder, we're gonna see a rod. So this is gonna be a rigid shaft that's gonna come through. It is adjustable up here. So as we move our rudder control handle, that's gonna, it's gonna steer that rudder. Again, we're gonna see a shear pin. So if you get a little crazy with it, this is gonna be a different material. It's gonna allow that to pop instead of breaking the rudder. And then where deployment's gonna be by hand on this rudder, we're gonna see this bungee here. It's gonna supply our tension. So when it's up, it's gonna hold it in that position. When it's down, it's gonna be there. Now, the plus side of this is if we do strike anything or run across anything, it's gonna pop up and then return back to its location so we don't have to worry too much. And then we are gonna see a drain plug right here on the stern of the kayak. Uh, moving back up, we'll talk about the drive now. Um, again, what we stated earlier, this is gonna be a thermoform polyethylene. So polyethylene is what you're used to and seeing from um, all the Hobie kayaks but the process of molding this is gonna be different than the classic roto mold design. So the drive, we're gonna have the port here. We've got our clips. They re-engage just like we're used to. Pull them towards the cockpit, pop them out. So this is what they're calling the classic drive. We're gonna see some different color components than what we're used to for the GT stuff. Um, this is a standard fin. This goes back to the GT style fin with the small adjuster. You've still got your stainless mass. You know, everything else is still gonna be the same. We're gonna use the same um, idler cable, chains. We've got our split ring as well as our clevis pin there. And then the adjustment is what we're used to on the GTs where we have that squeeze and lock in and that's gonna allow you to set to that leg length without having to worry about your seat. Um, we will see the updated reflectors onto the pedals. And again, drops in and locks on its own. So that is going to be a quick run through on the Hobie Mirage Passport. Again, specs on this boat, we're at 10 foot, five inches in length, 34 inches wide on the beam. We're looking at 65 pounds unloaded, 75 pounds with our drive seat and paddle, and a capacity of 325 pounds. Um, again, guys, feel free to comment, tag in, let us know what you're thinking. So thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.
Don't burn yourself. Uh, what this does though, is it kind of melts down those fibers and keeps it from fraying back. Also keeps that knot nice. And we'll do the other end of that line that we cut. That way we don't lose it. Um, the stuff gate makes great, great. Did you just breathe on it? <laughs> no, it's like, um, sorry. Breathing on my lighter here and blowing out my, my flame. But, so treat it up. This is all our spare. Uh, we do installs in the shop. This goes to the customer. They can do what they want with it. But what we're looking at here, guys, is that is an anchor trolley install. So components, we've got the block up front, scrolling down to our line management, keep it from flipping up. This one has a nifty little lock system in it, your lever lock and your ring. Scrolling on back again, piece of line management and the other block. So guys, that is kind of a quick and dirty run through of a anchor trolley install. Definitely appreciate you guys tuning in. I know this is a little bit longer than some of the other videos we do, but look forward to us doing some more install videos, some more walkthrough videos. Be sure to um, subscribe and uh, turn on notifications so you can know whenever we're doing these videos. Appreciate it, guys. Cheers.